Hey guys, we're back with another uh, TED Talk, or TED's Tech Talk, if you will. Uh, our first question says, with so many factory supercharged vehicles coming to market, what's better, change the upper pulley or the lower pulley? Well, anytime we have the opportunity to change a lower pulley, we always go after that first for the simple reason of belt traction. Okay, you have a limited belt and you have a limited size pulley that um, gives you the amount of traction that the belt can grab onto. When you go to a smaller pulley, you're increasing the amount of torque it takes to turn the blower because you're spinning it faster, but you're also reducing the, the belt traction surface. And I, and I put a little demonstration together, and what I did is I, I got a 3.8 pulley and a 2.8 pulley here, and I marked the belt at 3 and 9 o'clock, okay? And then I wrapped it around the 2.8 pulley and marked it at 3 and 9 o'clock, okay? And you can see changing the pulley from a 2.8 to a, from a 3.8 to a 2.8, you lose almost an inch of belt traction wrapped around that pulley. So you're going down on belt traction and you're going up on torque necessary to turn the blower and you end up with a belt slipping situation and this the most slipping happens during throttle transition so when you smash the gas it'll slip and then it might catch up and then eventually build boost and when you get off the throttle same thing it slips in the other direction we've monitored this on the chassis dyno by putting a, a reflective tape on the pulley on the supercharger pulley and a reflective tape on the balancer and we use laser RPM signals shoots a laser beam at the at the tape and it um, it gets you a perfect RPM signal and we're able to graph those one over the other and go in and out of the throttle and you can see the belt slip so anytime we can go after the lower pulley that is always the best opportunity to raise boost and spin the blower faster without belt slippage. Our next question, what things should, should be checked before tuning a vehicle? So I put a little list together. Um, obviously the integrity of the vehicle. We want to be looking at the vehicle front to back. Um, no intake leaks, no exhaust leaks, no oil leaks, no coolant leaks. Um, the drive shaft is intact and the U-joints are good. The suspension, the tires, we want to make sure that the, the tread on the tires is good, there's no dry rotting or cracking, because we're going to be spinning the tires 100 and 160 miles an hour in a lot of cases. So, uh, and then we have to look at the whole build. We have to know every component that's in the build, the targeted horsepower. And in my previous video, videos, I've talked about how the importance of fuel system and fuel supply and obviously, so we want to make sure that we have enough fuel supply. We want to make sure that we have the right size injectors. Uh, spark plugs are the proper heat range and the proper gap. Uh, belt tension, you know, especially in a supercharged application, we want to make sure that that belt is the correct size and the belt tensioner has every opportunity to keep the belt tight under load. Um, intake system, we want to make sure that we have adequate cool air coming into the engine. So many aftermarket cold air kits are really hot air kits uh, and I laugh about that all the time I call them hot air kits you know they have no proper heat shielding and there's big gaps around it and it sucks hot air in from off the headers um, we want to make sure we have the proper map sensor naturally aspirated you wouldn't be changing a map sensor but if you add a supercharger you want to add a two or a three bar map sensor so the computer can see actual manifold pressure manifold pressure is used in the newer cars to calculate injector opening time. Uh, it's part of the equation and it's called um, fuel pressure delta. So the computer has to know the intake manifold pressure versus the fuel pressure to come up with that delta number so it knows how much fuel that injector will flow under those circumstances and that's a constantly varying. Uh, obviously your, your fluid levels, your oil, your water, your transmission fluid, your rear end fluid, all those have to be full and clean and ready to go before we put it on the dyno. Um, that about covers it for today. Uh, we appreciate you watching our videos. Uh, if you can give us a like and share, uh, tell your friends about us and check us out next week. Thanks.